Hello everyone, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the mixer in MuseScore to make the free sounds, the Muse sounds, sound a bit better. So I've uh, pretty much reset everything here, oh, except for these, hold on. Uh, firstly, how I like to, you know, um, work with stuff, I like to go to continuous view and it just makes it much easier, you can just scroll through, there's no pages that you have to worry about. So, first of all, we're going to hit F10, or if you don't have a F10, you can go to View, and then click Mixer over there. And once you click that, this thing will pop up, and this is it. This is pretty much the mixer. All your instruments are here. Um, you can add effects, you can add um, reverb, and you have a pan. And then the volumes are, are all over here. And then the one on the right is the master, so that controls everything, basically. Now, the first thing is there are actually better instruments that are included in um, the Muse sounds. And uh, that's mostly for the brass. So, first of all, the horns. So when I play these horns, uh, these are the, the ones that are default. And in my opinion, they sound pretty flat. To make them better, all you have to do is click this little arrow, go into Muse Sounds, Brass, and Horns A6. And what that means is that there's six horns uh, being recorded together, which makes it sound fuller more and more realistic, especially in uh, if there's like horn 1, 3, and 2, and 4. Like that means there's a whole horn section. So when I listen to this again, it should sound uh, much better. And yep, yeah, that's that's it for the horns. And now they also have it for trumpets. Click the arrow again, Muse Sounds, Brass, and Trumpet A4. Now the trumpets always sound terrible in Muse Score. I don't know why. Um, but it makes it sound a bit better compared to um, this. Tiny bit. Sometimes I don't use the trumpet one and I stick it to the normal trumpet. So I don't use A4, but it's really up to you. It's like a, a stylistic choice at this point. So the best uh, change out of all of these is the trombone. It makes a big difference this. I'll just play it from here. And then I'll change it, same as before. Muse sounds, brass and tr trombones, A3. And got to change it for both of them. And now, That is a lot better. Now if we play the brass section by itself. It sounds way better than before. So that's it for the brass and that is pretty much it for all instruments. It doesn't come with tuba. Uh, you can see all the um, the A6 is here and they don't have it for woodwind here and neither for the strings except they have uh, string sections and then a solo string but yeah that's it the next thing would probably be the reverb now what I usually do is just turn them all on and then make it like around 30 to 40 to 50 even um, just experiment just they're all on, they're all like, just like a quarter, basically a quarter. And now some instruments I have less, some instruments I have more. If there's like a, um, a like a solo, then I add a bit more just to make it sound a bit better. Um, yeah, you really have to play around. It's not that, um, doesn't make that much of a difference. For the piano, I wanted a little bit less because, um, you know, it makes it a bit murky with these runs sometimes. Yeah, the strings are a bit as well, a bit more, and that's pretty much it. Now for the master, you can have this uh, Muse reverb effect on the entire thing, and that makes it sound pretty good. Yeah, this is what it sounds like without it so far. And then once I turn it on, 
doesn't make that big of a difference, but um, it can if I, you know, turn it up. That's a bit imbalanced at the moment because we haven't done the volume yet. Okay, moving on to the volume of each of the channels. So the strings is probably the most important here. We're going to start with those. First of all, um, I like to set everything. This might seem weird, but I like to set everything at uh, minus 6 or negative 6. This is because MuseScore uh, clips a lot. It um, compresses everything that is too loud into like this big mess. So if everything is on 6, including the master, um, then you can uh, dial it up more so the instruments that you want to be louder are actually louder instead of just being um, compressed into this you know mass of sound. Um, so first of all, if you listen to this here, and you pay attention to the volumes down here, the viola is um, very quiet compared to the other strings. And now this is a default. If they're all at zero, the viola um, is quieter than the rest. So I like to put it at zero or even a bit higher just to balance the violins to the viola. Now they should even sound the same. Now this might seem weird, but the violin one um, is actually louder than the violin two. Now these are separate um, sound instruments, so they do actually sound the same. You see violin one and violin two, which means they're recorded differently. These are actually louder, and I also want them to be quieter than the violin two. Uh, this might seem weird, but it actually works out pretty well. I also like to put the cello a tiny bit louder because um, it supports the viola and it also sounds just a bit nicer. Now let's play this again, but it's balanced. You can um, definitely hear this viola part much better, which um, is what I was looking for. So yeah, this formation works for me. Now just keep in mind that you have to tweak it a little bit so it works in your situation because not all music situations are the same and you could have a completely different part. So just tweak, it, tweak this a little, but just make sure to put the violas a tiny bit louder than the rest um, so it balances with them. I did leave the bass in the middle of uh, 6 and 0, I didn't want it to be too outstanding, but enough that it you can hear it and it's there. But I'm going to turn the reverb off because it is a bit echoey, just to hear it properly. Okay, yeah, that's, that's better. So, um, I'm happy with the strings there. Now the brass are loud and with the new A6s and A4s with the new sounds, um, they are much louder. So that's another reason why we put everything down, just so we can balance it a bit better. So the trombones especially, um, I usually put them a little lower than 6, something like that. The trumpets are okay, I don't have many, tr I don't have much trumpet, um, you know, uh, outstanding bits for the trumpet but still they're pretty quiet the funny thing about the trumpets is the dynamics if you write p or mp it's going to be really quiet but if you write f it'll be too loud usually what i do is i write um just mp and then boost it up over here or mf even and then you also don't get that harsh um kind of uh ugly uh trumpet sound um, when you don't want it to, but you can if you do want it to. So, yeah, I usually put it a tiny bit higher. Now the horns, um, they're pretty distinct, so I, I usually put them up a bit. Now let's see how that sounds. Yes, that's pretty good. Now for the woodwind here. I usually have trouble with the woodwind. Sometimes I want uh, the flute one and the flute two to be different levels, and that sometimes can be a bit uh, 
weird to write for. Um, like if the flute one has a solo, I want the flute one to be louder. Um, but I don't want to write it as F because it's not F. So sometimes you have to sacrifice um, certain things for the sound you want. But usually the the woodwinds are louder. So zero or a bit above zero usually that um that usually works. So let's listen. Now you can keep an eye on the levels here and you can see um which one, you know, is higher and or not. So here's where I wanted the flute to be a tad bit louder than the flute too. And the bassoons you know, they have a nice bit, so I also turn them up. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the volume part of it, which is pretty crucial. But sometimes I even skip the woodwinds and just do the brass and the strings. Um, and that usually works as well. Now, this bit is optional, but it really makes a difference and really, um, you know, steps it up to the next level, and that's panning. So what panning does in this context is move the instruments to your left or to your right um, when you're using headphones or speakers or anything like that. Now starting with the strings, if you think about a real orchestra, violin ones are usually on the left. Now I went pretty extreme with this piece, but you don't have to do this. It, now this is a very um, personal thing. It really depends if you want to hear the panning like very dramatically or if you want it to be subtle so it's like a subtle realism thing that makes a pretty big difference so if you want it to be subtle i would do something like uh even 25 i think is the furthest i would go or 30 but for this piece i went pretty high and i put it on 65 now some orchestras have so violin ones violin two violas and the cellos in like the semicircle but in my opinion i like the format where it's violin ones, violas, then cellos, and then violin twos. So the violas and cellos are in the middle and the violins are on the outside. I have seen this in real life, but it is pretty uncommon. However, it does sound much better. So this actually separates violin one and violin two. So you can hear each part more distinctly and they don't um, mix together. And the same goes with the violas. Um, usually for the violas, I put it a, a bit less. And then the cello, even lesser, because it is a bass instrument. And you usually don't want to pan a bass instrument because you want it to be like a center. Um, you don't want to just hear bass in the left ear. So usually keep those a bit more in the middle. Now another thing you can do, or we can just experiment here, is just put them on both on 45. The thing is you can just play around what you want. Now that also sounds nice, and we do have a, a double bass, so the bass part is covered. So it really does depend on your situation. But I think for this piece, I will roll with this instead of um, lessening the two middle ones a bit. Yeah. Now for the brass, again, this is optional. Everything here is optional when it comes to panning. I usually don't, don't go too much with the French horns. I think negative 12 is enough. So on the left side, um, which is where they would be sitting in an orchestra. The trumpets are, they could be in the right or the middle. So I'll go 12 as well. Now the trombones. Um, this one is really up to you. You can go left or right. But I went right. Because the horns, um, they cover a lot of the orchestra. And again, the tuba is a bass, so I'm going to keep that in the middle.
So yeah, it's not that big of a change, but it does make a subtle difference. The woodwind again is a bit tricky for me personally, um, I'm not sure why, but the flutes... Uh, I usually experiment a lot with these, these change a lot in every um, piece that I do. But for this one, um, I put these a bit more farther out than the brass. So I went 20. And then just the oboes close by as well. Um, oops, sorry. All on the left side. And then just slowly went um, down here with the numbers. So you can see the 20, 18, then uh, went down to 16. And I'm going to go 14 for the bassoon. So I'm not sure if this really works, because all the woodwind are on the left side then. And that doesn't make much sense, but when it comes to listening, uh, it is, it's fine. Uh, another thing you can do is make one left and the other right, like we did with the violins. So now each pair of the woodwind section is on each side. Uh, that works a bit, however, it's not realistic and if you combine flute parts so if you combine flute one and two and, and over one and two so you just have one channel i mean one staff uh you can't do that anymore so i usually just keep them the same you can also put the flute and oboe on the left and the clarinet and bassoon on the right uh so you just make these both positive and this works as well to spread out the woodwind section. Yeah, so it's really up to you, but I wouldn't um, go extreme with the numbers. You can all, you can uh, narrow these all down, especially the strings. Um, these are really pretty bored. I don't think I would go any further than 65 with panning. So this is pretty much the limit in my opinion, but you can do whatever with the panning. Um, you're free and actually I haven't talked about the piano at all. However, um, I, I think I just turned it up because, you know, it's a solo and I didn't want, want much reverb, but I think I've said that already. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing to do with the piano. There are other pianos. There's a, a dream piano. I don't know. Um, I did play around with these, but I just stuck with the default because it was the most clear. Yeah, so that sounds a bit funky. Okay, that's an organ. <laughs> yeah, the soft piano. So if you want to, um, you know, experiment with different sounds, there's actually a lot of hidden sounds that you might not have uh, known you actually installed. So there's just, you know, a bunch here. And yeah. So there's heaps of percussion, the strings, uh, the hidden brass is a really good tip. And yeah, there's a bunch of pianos too. Okay, so I think that's it. So this is my first music tutorial. So um, yeah, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know how this the edit's going to be. Uh, hopefully it's good. Hopefully you got everything and leave any questions in the comments and I will answer them. And if you want to know more tutorials and like uh, anything, I'll do them if I have time. Okay, bye bye.